basketball uh, Amazon weight training. Since in 2011, I decided we need to compete. That was a passion that I was holding in my life for so long, and I never really took it seriously. So I turned it to a serious business. I started company in 2011, and I won, 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 won. Every show that I did, I became more passionate about pursuing what I really wanted to do. And I was lucky enough, and I had the genetics to grow and to be better and better every time that I competed. So it took me to the third place in Canada. And no one was taking me that if I go to Arnold's, I'm going to place anything in the world. Because we had girls, Russian, beautiful, long, blonde girls like from Russia, right? Or we had Brazilian girls with that really nice bomb that they had. I was like, <laughs> who wants to compete with all these beautiful, gorgeous women? I said, you know what, I'm just going to go and give it a shot to see what it is. And voila, I placed second. As you're standing there in the spotlight, you're doing quarter turns, and everyone's watching you, right, and judging you. Like how you have your back, your shoulder, your abs, your muscle, the beauty, the whole package comes into the camp. Yes, I don't want to talk so it's about kind of myself too much. I want to talk about what you guys have in your life as a passion. What drives us to wake up in the morning, dress up, go to work? What are you going to do after work? So what you do in your job is not really who you are. What you do after job, that makes you who you are. That's my belief. Everyone has a job. Unfortunately, we need a job. We need security, right? We need 9 to 5 job to do the things, to take care of our family or kids. So what we do, we kill our passion. We underestimate our passion just because we want something secure. We call it 9 to 5 job. But as I said, what makes us is what we do after job. What do you do for your passion? What is your passion? Can you tell me? Do you know what's your passion? Um, sure. <laughs> <laughs> That's what I'm asking. I don't want to put you on a spot, but most of the people that I ask what's their passion, they don't know what their passion is. What is your passion? Yeah, I have a passion for, I'm, I am in finance, so I have a lot of business and accounting background, but in my spare time, I'm working towards a certificate in interior design, so passion for that, and also related is like photography. Very nice, very nice. So that's who you are inside you. You know when we were a child, we weren't into adulthood yet, we wanted everything, right? We were open to the world. We were so open to go to mom and dad say that, I want this. And we would do everything to take that. We would cry, scream, quit eating, whatever, right? To get what we wanted. But what happened? We grew up. We came to the adulthood. We took some responsibilities. And we forgot our passion. But there's always hope. There's always hope to listen to our heart, to go back to our childhood inside us, so the one child inside Anya, that what she wanted really to do when she was 12. Now she's grown up, now she's like 30, 35 plus. She got so much responsibility in her hand. She's managing this company. She has this family. She has this, that, that. So what happened to her passion? Now you're pursuing your designing passion. You want to do something out of it. Maybe one day you want to quit the job that you have here and focus on that and be your own boss. Who knows? Right? Who else has a passion here? No one? Okay. Yes? Um, I mean, I have a passion for sports. I was a professional athlete in college and I still mm -hmm. golf and ski and run and play field hockey. So it's a passion of mine that I pursue. So that's okay. And what do you do about it? Um, I mean, I partake in all those activities as much as I can outside of my other responsibilities. So it's really hard. Yeah. What we come to right now is the time management issue. How we want to manage our time. We have so much things in our hand to do. So what do you do? How do you manage your time to take your courses that you should take and follow your passion? You How do you manage it? You just have to build it in, put it in your calendar. Yes. You just have to do it. 
Sometimes we overanalyze things so much. Sometimes even we cannot sleep. Why? Because our mind is just like working, 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 rethinking, re-estimating, overanalyzing things. What, what about this? If I buy that, what about that? What about my kid? What about the college? This, that. So you don't have enough time actually to sit back in a quiet time with our own thing and then see what we want from our life. I think this should be a question for everyone that wakes up in the morning that what I want from my life. If the answer is not what you're doing right now, then it's a time to change. And that's the beauty of life. Every day is a different day. The days are changing. June 5th, June 6th, June 7th, June 8th. Days are different. And it comes day by day. So you can change day by day to come closer to really who you want to be. There is no maybe. There is no maybe for me. Maybe there is for you. I don't have plan B. I cannot be the best manager and the best competitor at the same time. It required so much, so much dedication to become like this. The food, the supplements, the workout. Sometimes we work out four or five hours a day. How could I do that? So this is the way that I time manage myself. I party less. I said no to people more often. I said, if you want to come see me, come do push up with me. <laughs> right, Jacqueline? We didn't go out much more. Whomever wanted to come see me, they knew that they can come work out with me for free. I would experience, I would just share my experiences about how you make price up, like how you make your glutes look firmer and rounder or your shoulder caps. I think that's better than going and drinking, isn't it? What is your passion that you really? You look so smart and sharp. <laughs> yes. Um, I don't know. Do you have any childhood in you um, that you have forgotten? I don't really have. Like I, I like a lot of different things. So I don't really want to name it. Name it. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm really interested to know women. <laughs> I want to know why they don't have confidence to tell me what's in their heart. Well, it's not so much I don't have confidence, it's just that I have, don't have one passion that I focus my time on. Okay. I like everything, so I guess I'm just passionate about everything, everything. In life. Yeah. What drives you to wake up in the morning? Um, to be honest, not getting fired from my job. So my other passion is sleeping. <laughs> sleeping? Uh, I just want to take it easy. <laughs> That's good. That's good. Is that what you wanted to be when you were a child? Um, no. I just, like when you're a child, you, you have a job like being a vet or a farmer or a policeman or something. It's just what you think will be fun and exciting, right? And you know, working a corporate job nine to five. Now what I think is fun would be to relax at home, sleep, eat. And so nothing. somehow what I hear is that we subtitle passion with security. No, the job is the security, the passion is not having to do that. <laughs> right. Right. What about yourself? I didn't even touch you. I don't know. So the first thing that I say when someone says, I don't know, I'm like, be honest with yourself. That's the real strength to me. Like the strength is not that how much I can lift, can I lift this or this, is that how true I am with myself. Do I believe in myself? If I say I want to be champion of the world, is it really I'm saying it or I'm going to do it? Am I going to wake up 4 a.m., go do my cardio and work out and then go to work? Or I'm just going to sit back and say, you know what, I don't have enough time. So the first thing is that you are true to yourself, you believe in yourself, and you're honest with yourself. So now you can close your eyes. Tell me what you like in your life. Honestly. 
from a passion point of view, I really, I don't know. I think if I knew what my passion was, I probably wouldn't. You would pursue it by now. <laughs> so. That's a good thing actually to look at. I don't know how old you are, but age passes so quickly, right? By the time we open our eyes, we are like 40, 50, 60, and there is not enough time to, to really dig in into our heart and do whatever we wanted to do as a passion. Passion comes to profit. You can monetize passion so easily. If you believe really in what you do, people will follow you. The leaders are made leaders just because they believe in themselves. No one makes me a leader. No one made this. I made this myself. I decided that, you know what, I always wanted to do bodybuilding, fitness, let's take it serious. I want to go try it. I'm Persian. I'm from Iran. We never had the opportunity to go on a bikini on a stage. They would kill us. It's an Islamic Republic country. Everything changed after 1974, 1975. So when I came to Canada in 2002, I had to find a job. I had to develop my English. Kathy, you remember me from Oan Why? How could I talk? Could I talk like this? Not as well, no. Not as well, right? No. Yeah, tell them exactly how could I talk. I wasn't even confident enough maybe to go to Kathleen and ask for a pen. She's very, very, very shy and a lot more reserved. That's why I really meant what I said when in 2005, like over the last six years or so, she's transformed. Like she's not the person at all that I knew in 2005. And I think her fitness and her lifestyle has been the backbone, which really... Yes, we didn't study English back home. Everything was in Farsi, right? And I came here in 2002 on my own to pursue a new life. Did have a fitness in my heart. But I didn't have money. So I had to have a job. Robert Half sent me to OMY and that's where I met Kathleen. So I started working there. And then OMY hired me as a permanent. Right away, like in a couple months. I stayed there, worked there, changed my job to Margaret Investment Limited as a project manager. I worked there for seven years. Meanwhile, I was doing whatever was my passion. I'm, sitting, I'm standing here right now talking to you like this, freely, openly, and I'm so comfortable. I'm not really nervous or anything. I couldn't do this five, six years ago. So bodybuilding and fitness not only improved my body, as Kathleen said, it just transformed everything in me. I can stand here right now, even in bikini right now. If you want, I can take it off standing in bikini <laughs> and talk. You know, I'm so confident about my stuff right now. Competition is empowering. Bodybuilding and fitness is empowering. It doesn't matter if you walk or you do yoga or whatever. <laughs> Was she or he? Maybe I just said bikini and then. So, Anya, what would you suggest to someone who is in our position that is interested in obviously maintaining a healthy lifestyle, incorporating some sort of fitness, whether it be you know yoga, Pilates, walking, running? Yes into their lifestyle, like how did you, obviously you are a lot more passionate than maybe some of us about mm -hmm. this industry, and this industry might not be for everyone, True. but how would you pair the want for health and uh, lifestyle and wellness with maintaining a nine to five or nine to six or seven career like this? Right. What would be your suggestion? If you look to the life of the most successful people in the world, they have done everything. You can't find someone that's the premier here, like Kathleen, Kathleen Wayne. I work with her campaign as well. She runs every day. She works out every day. She advertises her YouTubes that she runs every day. Something simple, right? But she is like top-notch women making decisions from a government. So everything is doable. And I really, really insist in putting fitness into lives. 
it doesn't matter if you walk or you do yoga, it doesn't matter. As you said, not everyone wants to compete or be a bodybuilder, right? I train Catherine and I always ask her, please wake up in the morning. First thing you want to do is your cardio. Be with yourself, listen to the music that you want. Before you get into the whole crazy world out there, just pay attention to yourself. That's scientifically proven to burn your fat, which I want to talk about it maybe later. But right now, I'm just talking about the soul and your mind and your body's connection together. First thing in the morning, girls, cardio. Before you check your emails, before you check your meeting schedule, that's your passion. <laughs>
So all of those are things that I learned from Anya. And I was actually away for uh, the last five days. I was in Las Vegas at a bachelorette party uh, with 17 <laughs> girls. <laughs> so you can imagine that my eating habits weren't what they had been. Mm -hmm. And to be completely honest with you, the last two days I felt like crap. And I still made conscious efforts. I took protein powder so I could supplement some of my meals and have protein shakes, which is just powder and water. Shake it up, drink it. I took Quest bars, and every morning instead of having, they would eat bacon and eggs and hash browns and this and that, or crepes, they were doing all savory crepes. I would walk myself to the food court and go get a big salad with grilled chicken for breakfast. Wow. So it's little things that I've learned that I don't need to eat as much as I was eating. I'm hungry every three hours, like starving, like famished. I haven't eaten my next meal yet, actually. <laughs> so if you hear my stomach growling, that's why. <laughs> but it's just adapting those little changes to your life that I think will make a big difference. At least they have for me. Exactly. As Catherine said, thank you so much, Catherine. Your body needs 30 grams of protein every in every meal. More than that, it's just enough extra calories and it's just going to go away. It's not going to get even digested by your body. 30 grams of protein is 3 to 4 ounces of chicken. So it's like this big. Like I said, your palm. This is the measure of the chicken or fish or whatever you want to eat in each meal. More than that, it's just extra calories, right? But you need that in every meal. You need that every 3 hours. If you work out, of course, you're going to have more meals. If you work out is less, then you're going to have less meals. But you're going to eat more than one or twice a day. That's the first thing that comes in a weight loss. And I have practiced that with all my clients. All my clients have seen the results. So now it's lunch time. I don't know if you guys had a lunch or you're going to go get a lunch or this is your first meal or second meal of the day. I have no idea. But I hope everyone had a breakfast. Everyone had a snack by now. What time is it? It's like 12.30. I hope everyone had three it's meals one. by now. One o'clock. Mm -hmm. That's going to be the plan. Breakfast, little snack, like cottage cheese, blueberries, and get ready for lunch. After lunch, again, going to be a little snack. Maybe protein shake. Maybe a quest bar. Quest bars are the only bars that I can suggest to be eaten because they are high in fiber, less in sugar, and less in preservatives and all that garbage. And then when it comes to dinner, you want to have good fat and good salad. You don't want to have too much carbs. Carbs are like rice, potato, even like pasta. Everything should come during the day, not really after 6 or 7. If you are ordinary like, like us, if you're a bodybuilder, that's a totally different thing. But for us, would be not so much carb after six or seven, only protein and salad. Again, this would be your protein. You're not gonna eat the whole chicken. <laughs> I wanna wrap this up, we don't have enough time. I'm looking forward to questions. Everyone should ask me questions. Come up with questions. I start from you. Um, I love your abs and <laughs> oh, <laughs> So much. What, what, how would you, what would you say are the key ingredients to get that kind of, you know? For the apps? <laughs> how much work would it take to get that, you know? Then I might decide whether or not I... <laughs> Everyone <laughs> has... <laughs> you just want that. Right? Yeah, okay. just want that. <laughs> These are all photoshopped. <laughs> um, everyone has apps. It's just that it's hidden by the fat layers. <laughs> oh, that so... <laughs> So if you see the fat people just sitting on a machine doing like million abs, that's mm -hmm. nonsense. The first thing that they have to do is look to what they eat, mm -hmm. right? By the time you clean up your diet, you're gonna see the fat shredding of your body. If you work out at the same time, then it's gonna be faster. Mm -hmm. For each pound of your fat to lose, you need 3,500 calorie, shortage of calorie. You need to cut 3,500 yes. calories. Yes. So by the end of the week, if you do 500 less calorie every day, by the end of the week, you're going to lose a pound. Mm -hmm. Just imagine. And that 500 just comes from 
Maybe you just grab a little bit like chocolate in here, maybe a cookie there, maybe a little bit extra chicken here, maybe a little bread here. It comes to 500. <laughs> it's like HST, right? It just adds up to everything so quickly and so easily. So if you try to, to really have a program for yourself, how much I'm going to eat, to, for example, lose that weight in five or six month period, whatever it is, it's so manageable and doable. But how much effort would it take in terms of the exercise? For me, it's a lot of effort because I'm competing. I'm getting judged by the best of the best in okay, the world. Okay, average person. Yes, yeah, <laughs> average person, I say 45 minutes a day um, weight training and half an hour for cardio. So day. half an hour, yes. So I, half an hour cardio, well, half an hour cardio should be every morning because you eat every day, right? But weight, you can do every oh. other day, exactly, to rest your body. 45 minutes is the max of your workout. You don't want to really excruciate your cortisol or your hormone because you introduce cortisol when you work out. It's all a stress to your body. So that's why we say take a day off to rest, to build muscle, right? To rebuild what you turn down. Cardio every day in the morning. And then you get this body. <laughs> you look gorgeous, by the way. You don't have to change. But I know everyone has an image of what they want to be. If you want to abs, then you start with your nutrition first, your cardio, and your weights. Thank you. Okay, questions. Everyone should have a question. Mm -hmm. uh, if you don't have enough time to prepare, you know, good six, seven meals a day. Mm -hmm. Very good question. So what I do, I cook on Saturdays or Sundays. Uh, chicken, fish, whatever. If I want to grill, I grill. Oven, oven. Um, saute, saute, whatever. If I have vegetable, they're all cut, washed, ready, right? And then I measure my food because I want to eat like three ounces or four ounces or whatever or whatever. They go on a Ziploc and they go on my freezer. It's like how you get dressed up in the morning, you need one top, one bottom, one this, one that. What I do is just like one protein, one vegetable, I need carbs here, blah, 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 blah. And then I have a cooler, which you have a cooler too, right? Maybe we should make that next time. <laughs> Like that, and I have food for day. I'm not gonna touch the sausage in the street or a pizza next to my work or the cake that they brought into the meeting and then the sandwiches that they, they have no value. In. No, <laughs> right? Especially with our job. I know it's like rush, rush, rush. As you say, we don't have enough time. Meeting sandwich comes, the first thing is your hand grabbing a sandwich, right? It's just like bread and a little bit like mayonnaise and a little bit like tuna this much. There's no value. So that's what I do. I cook in a week for the whole week, freeze it, whatever, and then I use it. And if you aren't that committed, I cook every Sunday, and then I cook either Wednesday night or Thursday, depending on how ambitious I got. And really, it took me a long time at first when I was doing it, because I was like, oh my gosh, I'm like, I have enough chicken here to feed an army. I have enough this, I have enough that. But it's a lot faster now, and I just, Tupperware everything and throw it in the fridge. So then in the morning, I just know that I'm grabbing four containers and I'm going. The most difficult thing that I see is breakfast. People used to, you know, skip the breakfast or just get a bar or a little bit like orange juice or something because they just want to get out, right? It's so easy to do uh, egg whites and oatmeal together and put it in a microwave. By the time you do your makeup, a minute, that's ready. It's just going to come up like a muffin. Yes, it's just going to get harder together, like egg white and oatmeal. It's going to come in like a muffin. You can add maybe like peanut butter to it. Maybe you can add blueberries to it. You can go millions, millions different ways. What I do is simple is just like egg white and oatmeal. It's like a muffin. I just grab honestly and go out. Or you know those uh, cupcakes, right? Cupcake makers, whatever. You can put egg whites in them, oatmeal, vegetable, whatever you like. Make like cupcakes of yourself with 12 of them. And then have one for your snack and for breakfast and everything. That's what you're gonna see every day. You're just gonna look better, feel better, and lose weight. So you're not supposed to eat fruits in the morning? Fruits? Yeah. I said oranges, like the orange juices that you buy is just really don't have much value or concentrated. They're not fresh squeezed, right? If you can do fresh squeeze, oh, that's the best. Put the sugar in it. What's that? Put the sugar in it. Put the sugar in it? No, 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 but there's sugar in it. In that's fine. The sugar from fruit is fine for your body. You need that sugar. 
is a really good sugar. After my workout, you know what I take? It's protein powder and it's like Gatorade. It's full sugar. So we come to that next time, that how you want to build muscle, right? When you work out, you tear down everything. You need insulin to open up your muscles for the protein to get absorbed. And that's why you need sugar. So the best time to have like sugary fruits, like pineapple, watermelon, <coughs> Uh, mango, these should be after your workout. And in Just the morning. be smart about what you eat, when you eat. Mm -hmm. And in the morning, right? Morning is in always... In the morning, blueberries are so fun. You don't want a high sugar in the morning. You okay. want more protein in the morning okay. to keep you feel, you know, through the day. It's going to help you. You're making decisions and you're working and stuff too. Sugar in the morning is just going to depress you. Yeah. Even the natural sugars that come in the fruit. Uh, blueberries are fine because they're antioxidant and they're really high GI. The, the index is low. Okay. The high index should be only after your workout. Okay. Like pineapple, mango, watermelon, that I mentioned. Blueberries, raspberries are the best in the morning. Mm -hmm. And so just so everyone understands and me myself, when you say workout, you mean weight training. Yes. So Some workout people think is not that walking. And some people think that workout is just cardio. Thank you so much. Yes, cardio I have that is problem with my clients. I'm like, do you do workout? They're like, yes, I ran for 30 minutes. I'm like, yes, but that's not a workout. Workout is really getting big and dirty and lifting, right? You need a program. Your body has made of sugar, of shoulders, bicep, tricep, chest, back, legs, glutes, right? So you want to hit it everything in different days. I have a different program, one day I have for my shoulder, one day I have for my back, chest, blah, blah, blah. You want to incorporate all your body every day as a usual person. That's going to make you muscle and that's going to burn your fat. Walking and cardio is not for fat loss. People think if they run, they're going to lose fat. They're just burning calories. Losing fat is by making muscle and having a good diet. Walking is good for your heart. It's cardiovascular. It makes the blood circulation better. It makes your everything it just runs smooth in your body, right? It's like a system that just regenerates itself. It's good in this way. But really, really digging into shape, transforming your body, adding tone, it's just going to come with weight training. Only weight training. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like how would one kind of start weight training? Right. So you have to get a trainer or you have to go on YouTube. I'm working on my website actually to put some CDs on my own workouts. So what I'll do, I'm just going to videotape it. I never had this much time. As I said, I was working full time and I was doing fitness competition at the same time. But right now my focus is most into this. So I'm going to incorporate that on my website to do videos on my training. I'm going to explain really what you should do as an intermediate, advanced, and beginner. For you would be um, going on YouTube, let's say that you want to work legs, you want to work at home or gym. You just know YouTube has so many things right now, right? You can find so many people. Go to my website or my Facebook as well. I can introduce you to, to good places. Next. Are so quiet. <laughs> um, I know that some like nutrition and workout plans like talk about like, a cheat day. Yes. Like, what's your opinion? That was a really good day? question as well. So what we do, we eat clean for like five, six days, and then we have one cheat meal, not cheat oh. day. <laughs> <laughs> so let's say Kathleen loves cheesecake. Right? I'm going to go ahead, have your cheesecake. But she has to be clean in five, six days and compensate that with the cheesecake that she wants in that day. So you don't want to go have cheesecake every day. You want to keep that for something for the weekends. You go out with your partner or whoever, you want to have a glass of wine. Go ahead, enjoy that glass of wine. Actually, that's good for your metabolism. So when you eat clean for five, six days, and then you just chop your body with a glass of wine, that's actually better for your body. Boost your metabolism. Really good question. All questions are actually really good. Mm -hmm. Remember when you go out to a restaurant? Yes. You know, it's really tough, like, when, because it's a way of socializing. Exactly. So when you're eating out and, you know, 
lots of food, lots of choices. Yes, that's the problem with eating out in airports. I know we travel a lot. Yeah. It's airport food, it's a food court here and there, meetings. As I said, you should always have a plan for your food. If the worst case scenario happens, you're in a restaurant, you don't have your food, you haven't been eating. I usually eat before I go to restaurant. Oh. Yes. I eat the food that I want, or parties. I eat the food that I want to eat, and then I go to the parties. Maybe I just grab vegetable here and there, or hummus or something healthier, right? So I eat the food that I want to eat. If I go to a restaurant, maybe I just want a little salad. Maybe like a little appetizer. Something that I know what's in it. If you see something fancy that you don't know you and you can't even pronounce the name, don't get it. <laughs> something that you know what's made of. You can order, hey, I want something with a spinach and steak. Asparagus and a steak. Three ounces of a steak, even you can get how much, like three ounces of a steak with some asparagus works for me. Or in salad, I don't put dressing on my salad, I get my dressing on the side. Don't add cheese, or add like low fat cheese, whatever you want, you can ask for it. Yes, someone here? Oh, I was just going to comment that I never used to go into a restaurant and ask for customization. So I would always think, oh, I can't stick with my diet because it's not on the menu, but I realized that you can like say, can I um, not get the bun? Or yes. can I get like um, no croutons, but a little bit extra at long beans or something? Yes. And I found that if you're nice about it, people don't care because exactly. there's a lot more people with even more free oh, restrictions. Yeah. That if you I love that. This, yes, I love that, that attitude. Yes. Sometimes we are shy to ask for what we need because we think that it's not doable, or, oh my God, what are they gonna think about me? Yes, as you said, right now I do the same. Whenever I have brunch, I'm just saying, you know what, can I have one egg with like six egg whites? A little bit of spinach on the side, like it's not on the menu, but I'll make my own menu. You don't have to really follow everything, that menu comes, one of it. You, you have your, you have you, you are you. You make your own menu. Mm -hmm. I think it's, it's more, like the idea of going to a restaurant is trying the meals, right? Yes. So, so it's kind of rethinking, you know. But yeah, as my you know, love yeah, said, yeah, yeah, so you're you're gonna gonna eat eat how you eat at a restaurant, even though you want to try. Yes. And Thai Scott these days have so many varieties of gluten-free, this-free, that-free, so you can have more options to ask for. And I think restaurants, like the best restaurants, should be open to different things. Like they should have things handy. Sometimes I ask for whole wheat, like we don't have whole wheat. I'm not gonna go to that restaurant again. Restaurants where I said, Oh, I don't want this, and at really good restaurants, the waiter is actually really good by saying, Well, actually, maybe I can make it for you with this instead. Exactly, they give so you more options. Yeah. You actually end up getting even better dishes than you thought. I mean, I do that already because I have a lot of allergies, but I do like the menu options where it sounds so good. I want to yeah. try it. I really know it's bad for me, but then you know, that's where it I guess that's where your cheat meal comes in. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> Yes, as you say, we want to enjoy our life. We want to enjoy that piece of cake and chocolate yeah. or pie or whatever it is. And there's no nothing wrong about it. It's just that you should be aware of what you're doing. Some people, they don't know what they're doing, right? They are so emotional, especially us as a women. We are so emotional. We get into emotional eating. Instead of crying, we eat. Um, I don't know. The first thing that comes with you when you are in your period is just like a bar of chocolate. No, just leave everything, you know? Deep breathe. See... What's else there to satisfy you rather than food? Food should be a tool for you to look better every day. Food is not something to make you happy. That's the end of it. Like food is not satisfying. No, seriously, food should be enough protein and vegetable to make you better and better. Your, your hair should shine every day. Your skin should shine. Your relationship should get better. You should be happier about yourself. And I know that in this world, everything is in vision. You have, it's, it's appearance, right? People look at you, the first thing is not really how you are inside. The first thing comes how you're outside. So let's keep that in check. Mm -hmm. um, I was gonna ask what you think about gluten-free, like gluten-free I don't do gluten-free things myself because I don't have any sensitivity. I have some clients that they have checked with their doctors, and doctors actually they told them that they should be gluten free. Like they do these tests these days that they check your body, what you're sensitive to. I think you have done that too, Kathleen, or no? No. 
So they test to see, for example, some people they cannot handle dairy at all, or fructose at all, or lactose at all, or gluten, right? So that's the best for you to go gluten free. Myself, when I go shopping, I'm not gonna look for gluten free because I don't have a problem. You have an ask me question. <laughs> <laughs> fitness training, usually bone density issue comes to the women that they don't work out in their like 20s, 30s, and 40s. I did that. You did that? Good. You just check it out. You should be on supplements and doctor please and all that. That will take care of it. But you have to start working out. Not so harsh to, to, to break down your bones, but you have to start from somewhere at the beginning to make you stronger. Because bones and muscles are all attached together, right? So if you don't have the muscle and you don't have the bone, your body is like shaky, shaky, shaky. So you have to start building your stuff up, just like step by step, as I said, really moderate, and then you get a stronger day by day. So I get up at 5 o'clock in the morning. So what, and you're saying to do the cardio at 5 in the morning? First thing in the morning when you wake up, I don't know what time you have to be at work. So you have to schedule that you want to take a shower and get ready and all that. Give yourself an hour of time in the morning to take care of your makeup and your cardio. I know probably you have kids to run after you or husband is doing this or your emails, whatever you have, like everyone has something in their life. Put everything on the side, put your music on and then go do like 30 minutes, hardcore cardio for yourself, sweat that all. And then come take a shower, have a good breakfast and then hit the dance floor. Okay. Every day. So at the beginning you asked, um, what is your passion? Yes. And everyone had, and I, I was like, for them. And I was like, I don't have one, but then while we're talking and everything is starting, the wheel's turning and trying to see what my yes. passion is. I guess I gotta go back to my desk and think about that. Yes, mm -hmm. write it down. Yeah. It's we all have a passion. We forgot. As I said, it's kind of like a fire underneath the ashes. There's always hope to bring that childhood up. Oh, everyone has a passion. I'm like, wait, I'm sure that when you were a kid, you were crying for something or talking to your dad and mom and what you want to really be and what you want. Maybe you wanted to do painting. Maybe music. Maybe you just wanted to be climbing the Everest. I don't know. And you forgot about it because the job was so hectic, the life got so hectic that you forgot, right? You choose to do something else just to bring money to your family or take care of other people in your life. Your priority just changed. Your whole life just changed. And then because it's a routine, you get up like a machine and you do and do and do and do and do. And then maybe after 30 years, you're like, hey, I'm 50 tomorrow. And I, I never did something that I wanted to do. So we don't want to come to that point. We just want to be happy and do whatever that we wanted to do. Question? I was actually going to ask, um, I think you just covered it in what you quickly talked about. Um, you recommend working out on the empty stomach in the morning? Uh, cardio. Okay. Yes. Not you working out. Training. No, no, no. For your weight training, you need enough food. Because what is the basic of weight training? Is tearing down the muscle and again giving it back food to repair. So this is how the plan should work. You get up in the morning, you grab a cup of coffee because it's a fat burning factor. You do your cardio, you get your breakfast, you go to work, whatever, whatever. You have your meals. Meal one, the meal number one is your breakfast, meal number two and meal three, right? Let's say you finish your work at five or six. So you want to eat hour or hour and a half before you work out. So it gets digested, you have enough food in your body to go work out because you need energy to lift. Right. You're probably not, I don't know about everyone else, but I'm probably not going to get up and do cardio and then go back to do something later. So chances are it's going to be one. One at a time. Yeah. That's fine. So if it's one at a time, you do your workout first and then you do cardio after. But you need to 
something Yes, so you eat like an hour, hour and a half before you work out, then you do your workout for 40 minutes. By that time, your food is digested and it's all gone. So it's kind of like your empty stomach. And then you're going to do your cardio. When your cardio finished, then you're going to get a protein shake in your body. That's hard though if you get up, if you're doing it first thing in the morning, it's going to be hard to eat like an hour before you Because some people get up and just, you want to do exercise right away. Yes. In order to fit in what you need to fit in the day, right? Yes. So it's an, it's hard to do in the morning? Yeah. Well, yeah. no, I prefer in the morning, but it's hard to eat like an hour before you start. I out see, in the I see, I see, I see. Then what you can do is just you can make like little protein shakes for yourself in the morning or BCAA. BCAA called branch of amino acids. I don't know if you guys know. So it's really like a little molecule of protein. It's like fast absorbed to your body. It gives you enough energy, for example, for yourself in the morning to do a weight training before breakfast. I know it's really hard to get 5 a.m., eat breakfast, wait for 6 a.m. Right. to go to the gym. I get your right. point, yes. So you can get that protein powder. Let that protein shake first thing, fast absorb protein and then go to your weights. Some people are so used to do weight training without food. Like I have seen bodybuilders that they prefer to work out in the morning without food. But there are a bunch of supplements that we don't want to know about. <laughs> so they get their food from somewhere else, right? As an ordinary person, you, your body needs nutrition. So fast absorb would be like protein powders. You can make your own bars. Don't eat just bars. You can make your own bars with like protein and seeds, a little bit honey, you know, mash everything like together, put it in the freezer and then cut them in a bar. I make my bars, I'm talking too much, it just comes mm -hmm. it's like, oh, no, 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 we have like no, two no, minutes no, before we wrap this. up. Yes. I make my own bars of cookies with like smashed, with, with mashed uh, banana, um, sweet potato or carrots, believe it or not. So I cook them and mash them and I add some seeds and peanut butter or protein powder, cocoa powder, stevia, sweetener. I make like round, nice like balls of, you know, stuff, like cookies, snacks. I'll take it with me. You can have those in the morning. It's so much fun to be fit and it's so much fun to make your own snacks and food with healthy things out there. Any I think last we can questions? have, yes, last question. You didn't ask me a question. Me? Um, I don't have a question. Leave me alone. No, I mean, I've been asked a lot of questions. Um, I've worked with a lot of trainers in the past because I was a competitive athlete, so I'm just kind of absorbing the advice. Do you agree with what I say? Yeah, I do. Okay. And I think it's a matter of how you take your ideal and work it into and work the it reality into. of your day is yes. really where it comes so you guys should be in touch. So I see in this group that some people are athletes, had a trainer, some people never touch. So if I were your cat, I would just like put them all in one distribution email for them to get in touch, share the ideas. Mm -hmm. Any question for you? Um, mine was hers, but like how, how do you build that into a work schedule? How do you bring snacks in? Mm -hmm. Preparing them early. Yes, preparing them in advance. So you can do like what I do and I actually Oh, what is that? Uh, so I put squish all my files into one side of my desk, and the other is all just like my snacks. That's what I did. If you open my drawer at work, I always have glutamine, protein, butter, um, little like apple, almonds. almonds. Yeah. If you have a fridge, I'm, I'm sure you guys have a fridge. Buy like cottage cheese for yourself. Every day you have, you just put two spoons, three spoons of cottage cheese. It's really good. Or Greek yogurt, if you oh, want Greek like yogurt, cheese. yes. So have your snacks handy before you reach to something that's not good for you. Thank you so much, everyone. It was a pleasure to meet you.